Today, I'd like to talk to you about how to anodize steel without ending up with a pile of rust. Most of us are familiar with anodized aluminum. This is a, the oxide layer can be dyed lots of different bright colors, and so as you can see from these coat hangers, it can become very attractive. Another similar one is anodized titanium. This is a, the color comes from the thickness of the oxide layer, not from artificial dyes. And so this is a spark, here's some anodized zirconium. And similar to the other above, it's also anodized in an acid bath of voltage. And with the thick, changing the thickness, we can get these different colors. Here's anodized niobium. Anodized niobium is also very attractive. These are earrings, and you can see the mountain scenes from different times for the anodization. And then, of course, we have steel. We have rusted steel, which brings us to our problem. The problem is steel rusts and it looks ugly. Now, to some people, they find the weathering steel appearance as attractive, but if we could improve the appearance, we could improve the marketability of steel, both in tools and in structures. And at this point, I want to bring to you a process we developed in my lab of anodizing steel in hot caustics, either sodium hydroxide or, or potassium hydroxide solutions. And so we have our anode is, is positive, this is the one which is colored, and then we have our cathode, which is also steel too, and this is just gives us the opposite reaction. Let's do a little quick uh, demo and watch a little video clip. So here's a video clip, and we're um, anodizing steel in 50% uh, potassium hydroxide, and I'm going to raise it one centimeter every minute. So there's two minutes, raise it a centimeter. This is at 60 degrees Celsius, three minutes we raise another centimeter. And so you'll start noticing some bands, some lines across the, the, the steel sample. Okay, this is five minutes, a counter electrode is also steel. And six minutes, we raise it up one more centimeter. Zoomed in, you can see the colors. The glass is slightly misted, so you can't quite see everything. There are seven minutes. Okay, you can see the bands of colors are starting to develop. We'll turn off the bolt, turn off the power supply, take the sample out of the um, potassium hydroxide, and we can see the colors, the bands, um, and everything on the uh, our surface there. So this is our process, very simple, very straightforward process for anodizing steel. So as we can see in this here is that at different temperatures, we can obtain dark by applying different voltages. We can apply a dark coating. Uh, lower temperatures, we get this um, dichroic, the colored oxides. If we go to too low of temperatures or too low of voltages, we, we basically get nothing. Nothing forms there. Well, there's something there, but it's not very protective at all. So we can take this uh, information and we can make our voltage current maps. And so over here we have 90 degrees. We have a black oxide forming, the dichroic, the colored oxides forming at slightly lower temperatures, 50 degrees Celsius, and volts between 2 to 2.5 volts versus the counter electrode. And we can see the current density is not too high of current density at all, um, 100 milliamps per centimeter squared. This looks awesome. Why don't we patent it? Well, we tried to patent it. It turned out that the, we're uh, prevented from patenting it due to the work by Hollis uh, back in 1899. He uh, sub patented a similar process for applying a preservative coating on steel uh, using batteries. And uh, although his process was never really seen to be used commercially, and the results are not very good, his, his patent precluded us from getting our patent. But let's go ahead and uh, look at um, surface. Here is our oxide film, and it's a thin layer of magnetite. And we can see the higher peaks. We have a lot of a magnetite on the surface. 70 degrees C, slightly lower peaks, uh, lower thickness. and uh, 750 degrees, down to 30 degrees C, we really don't see very much magnetite forming on the surface at all. Let's look at a SEM image of our, of our surface. Here is the uh, cross section. We can see our oxide film here, uh, the epoxy, and then down here is etched steel. So the oxide film contours the surface of our steel. Very nice. Let's look at the um, top view of that oxide. Here is a very high magnification top view. We can see that the, is that a solid oxide, but it's a pore section. You see small pores. The largest about 100 nanometers in diameter. So these are very, very fine. There's a grain boundary, so you can see a difference between the different grains as, as, it, as they etch. 
this is a uh, cartoon illustrating how the oxides are formed. We uh, saw the purple color forming, which is the Fe plus 6, the ferrite kind of hollow structures. Let's see the corrosion resistance in, in um, fresh water. Uh, these samples were immersed in beakers of uh, pure deionized water for four weeks until the water evaporated. They opened the, oxy opened the air and oxygen. Um, as you can see, for 600 grit, is that it just rusted. These were polysteel. Uh, this was the one, 30 degrees C, two volts. Not quite, you could almost see something on the surface, but it wasn't a very protective layer. Not very effective, as you can see the rust down there. 50 degrees Celsius, three volts. A very protective uh, oxide foil was grown, and we see that it uh, was unaffected by the water. Uh, one month in water and no effect. Here's one form at 90 degrees C, much hotter. Good, good corrosion resistance here. Now we said they were porous, and this is fresh water. How about salt water resistance? So now if you put the um, samples in salt water, uh, we can also uh, measure the corrosion um, resistance and polarization resistance here. Now this is polished versus anodized, very little change. Uh, we put different oils on the surface, different oxidizing it, um, different inhibitors. The biggest effect we see is from WD-40. We just simply sprayed the samples with WD-40. We can reduce the corrosion rate by 100 times. It's actually quite, quite impressive. So there's lots of uses for it. Here's a Damascus steel blade, which I anodized. We find out the different heat treatments. The uh, martensitic edge turns a different color than the ferritic uh, back. And these power line poles, which are just weathering steel, can also be um, anodized instead and provide a very attractive pole to be used. Here's some um, anodized steel hammers. Uh, due to the steel composition, most of the oxides turn out different shades uh, of brown or gold. Well, thank you for your time. I hope you enjoyed this talk and I hope you consider this technology.